Hello fellow steel mill modelers. Got something else I'm going to share. Uh, a few weeks ago, or it might have been a few months, Dan's Railroad 2011. He has a video of how to put dings and gouges in gondolas. And when he first started describing it, I was thinking, no, I'm not going to use a torch on a freight car. It doesn't sound like uh, it's going to turn out too good. But in fact, it turned out even better than I expected. So that's I did, uh, I think, two of these old roundhouse railgun gondolas like this so far. I'm hoping the camera can pick up the detail. I'm going to try to get it good for you so you can see it. This was done with a propane torch at a very very low temperature barely on and what you do well you know what go watch Dan's Railroad 2011's video he does it was it was beautiful it worked out just great I am so happy with the results this is Dan's method and it worked like a charm I've done them uh, in the past with a heat gun and they didn't even turn out that well this is so much better it's more precise and you can really put some dings and gouges in there now the gouges I forgot what I used but I used Dan's method it worked really great so today um, I had to replace a dryer and the dryer vent was a corrugated aluminum and it ripped apart at the seam and I had a piece you know probably about yay big around and I, I, when I, I was going to throw it away, but I, I felt it, and it felt like uh, the top of a boxcar. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to paint it and cut it up and make a gondola load. So that's exactly what this is. It's aluminum dryer vent that I painted. And I finally got my airbrush up and running. So I'll be trying my hand at that facet of the hobby. So today, I've already went ahead and saved some time and cut a piece of cardstock to fit the inside of this gondola. So now I'm going to glue this stuff in there, or attempt to. First I like to get it nice and a lot of glue on there. Just to make it tacky so I can take the first, first drops of this uh, new load that I'm making. I was going to glue it in the car but I figured see you know, I got a steel mill I got to unload the cars so I can just pop these loads out and store them in a box only to be reloaded you know somewhere else. So that's the idea behind this you know this eighth inch card stock or whatever that is. I don't know a sixteenth thick. I don't know how many mils it's probably yeah, two three mils thick. So let's try that. This is just to get the first layer stuck on, then I'm going to use more glue over top of it and stick as much of this stuff to it as I can. That's the plan at least. We'll see how it goes. And you got to kind of push it inward so it doesn't get stuck on the sides of your brake car. Yeah, bare spots. Lots and lots of bare spots. Down there. Okay. Well, that method didn't work too well. Keep trucking along here. Okay, that didn't work worth flip. So you may have to place them one at a time. And you're going to be there a while. But you can, you can, man, you can use anything to make an HO load. As long as you cut it down small enough. This is supposed to represent, you know, three foot chunks of uh, freight car. Good old freight car. That scrap share I built's got to have something to do so I figured I can set it up in the scrap yard cutting up a, an old box car with maybe some of this stuff you know next to it. Make it more believable. So I'm a firm believer in a vehicle or something like that that can really make a scene. As long as you got an interesting scene you add that perfect vehicle it'll make it pop. Yeah, yeah, here we go. I 
don't like to glue this load into the car until I'm all the way done with it. So this is probably going to be an all day process. It's very humid where I am. It was 116 with the heat index. Very miserable. And it is hot out here in my hobby room. So I'm only going to do this for a few minutes and share something and then I'm going back inside. Too hot, man. Well, that didn't work. Yep, got to do it the hard way. So apparently, man, glue and stick method then. But you can basically see what I'm doing. Anybody can do this. You can make a load out of whatever. Also, well, a lot of stuff you can make, you can find around your own home. Like this dryer vent. Perfect example. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And that is going to be probably it for now. But to get the general idea, and you can do this all day. You can make as many loads as you want exactly like this. Thought about putting a magnet, gluing a magnet to the bottom of the cardstock. That way I can just take a uh, piece of steel rod, stick it over a certain area of the car, and pop the load out that way instead of having to take the freight car off the rails and pop it out. So I think I'm going to do that. I have one or two neodymium magnets. I think I'm going to glue it on the bottom and we'll see if it works later on in another video. I thought it was a good idea. All we can do is try. Okay, that's enough. Fingers are all glued. The load is starting to take shape. Just push everything in without getting more glue on my fingers and hopefully everything will be perfect and I'm going to do a second round after this dries but not until it dries so it'll be a while stick it right there and I think we'll be good but please whatever you do go check this young man's workout He's a young guy, but man, he's a very, very good modeler. Check out Dan's Railroad 2011. And be sure to look up the video of him, Dings and Gouges and Gondolas. Great work. So It worked so well, I applied it to my own hobby, or my own railroad, and man, just wow. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for sharing, because it really makes a huge difference. I'm out. You guys have a good day. Bye.